first time I ever came here was in 1985, 1983 I mean, to meet with Warren, because we were talking to Wild and American Express Fund about him buying a part of the new Fireman's Fund. And I met him for the first time and thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, bef before 2018 or some year like that, we were in, tw I think, 23 states. It was always our vision to be in all 48 states. We're now in all 48 states. And of course, when J.P. Moore goes in, it's not just the branches. You have to think about, so the branch represents a physical thing, but we also do cover consumers, 25% of the branch in LMI neighborhoods. We bank small businesses. Uh, we do mortgages, affordable housing, credit cards, auto, uh, Chase Wealth Management. On top of that, private bank banking clients use these branches, middle market clients use these branches. We bank corporations. We bank people like Berkshire Hathaway by both, both buying and selling stocks, selling bonds. So the whole it all comes in. Then we do we have special programs to the LGBT community, the black community, the Hispanic community, veteran community. We actually hired disabled. We started the Second Chance Initiative. We have local philanthropy, usually done by the local leadership teams. So when we come in, we come in, all of us, to offer, you know, to try to do a great job here. We bank your cities, your schools, your states, your hospitals. Um, so it becomes a very broad effort, which is permanent. And I, I wish I'd done it before. So uh, it's been a great expansion for us. But I think by soft land, this means that inflation doesn't go up too much. You continue to have at least modest growth. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you have that for two years, it doesn't mean you're not going to have a recession after that. So I think that's a good question about what you mean by it. So we've been using it since 2012. Yeah. It's our own department 2014. We have 400 use cases day, today around risk, fraud, marketing, prospecting, idea generation, note-taking. Uh, it helps call centers you know, manage their, their complaints that are coming in uh, by anticipating what those might be. Uh, and it's going to grow over time. If 2,000 people do it, it's enormous. It'll improve productivity in a lot of jobs. It may eliminate certain jobs, you know, but don't stick your head in the sand. That's true for a lot of technologies. And for the most part, these technologies, I think it is going to be unbelievable. But it takes a long time for even unbelievable technologies to be integrated into the, you know, the large global economic system. Think of the Internet that was invented in 1968. I forgot when we had AOL, you know, but it takes a long time. When electricity invented, you didn't have electric wires everywhere. Cars were invented, you didn't have highways. When so you got to be a little thoughtful how these things get rolled out. It will have downsides, you know. You know, but so did cars and pharmaceuticals and airplanes. And bad guys are using the ready to try to get into people's systems for cyber for stealing money. So we have to counter that. And of course, there will be laws and regulations around it. But in the meantime, it's a unbelievable, powerful tool that we use to do a better job for our clients. And I think I think down the road it can do things like cure cancer. So I, I, I put this in the category of this could be unbelievable for your kids. They may never have to have, uh, suffer things like cancer or certain types of diseases. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's a very big positive other than the fact that bad guys are going to use it too. Okay. American leadership is necessary to keep the world free and safe in democracy. It cannot happen without good American leadership. So America coming together and I put in there that we got to teach people that America is an exceptional nation based upon principles. It was the first nation ever based upon principles. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of enterprise, and the, and the sacredness of the individual's rights. That is not how things in other countries were formed. They're around tribes. Did we make mistakes? Sure, huge. That doesn't mean you should denigrate the whole nation. You know, we should recognize the mistakes and fix it. We have a lot to do there. But I think all those things can help, can help us get, become a better nation. And we should always strive to be you know, a nation that's uh, on the road to, you know, to improvement. No. I'd like to see more consensus, more coming together. I mean, democracy by its nature is consensus. By its nature, it's not the majority telling everyone else what to do. You know, and so I, I'm a little puzzled why people don't understand that. And so, um, well, and we'll see. We've always had, you know, Warren Buffett tells us the best about the resiliency of America. And if you go back to you know, the Great Depression and World War II and the serious, far more serious than we're facing today. But in reality, this is the most prosperous economic nation the world's ever seen. It's probably worth hundreds of trillions of dollars. And eventually, it's going to be handed to our kids. Yeah. So they're actually not getting a raw deal. They're getting a good deal. Maybe with too much debt, but remember, it's worth that much after the debt. And so uh, but how, how you handle it is it's almost the person-by-person -person level. So when, if you came in here to do a financial plan, at whatever age you're at, you would have a conversation with the advisor about how do you set it up, 
how do you get your kids, and even things like, not just how do you get your kids, but how do you educate your kids about money? When do you want to give it to them? What, what are you allowed to do with it? And should you help them buy a house? And all these, so not a simple thing, but it's literally person by person. It's an individualized plan for every single person. And obviously taxes change all the time, so these plans unfortunately have to change all the time too.